Hello YouTube friends, here's another in the Liberty series and what I want to talk to you about today to do with Liberty is uh, something that I did quite a while ago so I've got absolutely no film of it because at that time I wasn't filming, I was just photographing things. I think I've mentioned before that uh, I, I, I have been making things with Liberty for a little while. Uh, I mentioned in one of these previous episodes that um, it was my mum's friend who gave me a big suitcase full of Liberty fabric. And in 2013, when I was involved in an exhibition with two friends, I decided I would make a quilt with this Liberty. First time I'd ever used it uh, for more than just, you know, little tiny projects, you know, dolls, house, dolls clothes, that kind of thing. Uh, and so this was my first time of using a huge quantities of this stuff and I made what I called my colour wash quilt. It's not a new idea, I didn't invent any of this. There is a, a, I can't remember the woman's name now, I've got her book as well, who does fantastic, I'll try and find it, I'll stick it in the link below because that's rude of me not to remember her name. Mind you, I can't remember anyone's names these days. My memory's just bonkers, it's really not great. But anyway, my uh, um, dementia issues aside, uh, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you today about the colour wash quilts that I've made. I've made colour wash cushions quite a few, but I've made three colour wash quilts. And the first one was for this exhibition. And as I say, all I've got is photographs. So what I'm going to do is this little voiceover and I'm going to show you the photographs of the um, the quilts that I've made and the construction of them and so on and how I make them. And, and how the design evolves. So go back to 2013 and I was working out of a different workshop. I work from home now. I do love that euphemism work from home, don't you? Because it means you're just sitting in your pyjamas at 11 o'clock answering emails and pretending you're working. But however, I do work very hard from home. <laughs> but at that time I was renting a workshop about three miles from here which was above a cafe that was run by two very good friends of mine. Uh, it was a really lovely setup, and it was a big, big workshop. It was huge. I might put a picture in here of how big the workshop was. And I had I have my design board here, but I had two design boards twice the size. It was absolutely fantastic. Anyway, that space then allowed me the luxury of design. It's very hard to do this kind of thing when you are working in a small space or if you've got to clear everything away at the end of the day to serve the family's meals. Uh, I've, I know that I'm very fortunate to be able to leave things out, to be able to uh, have a lot of space to design, step back, look, look uh, and so on, all of those things. And so uh, I conceived this idea of this colour wash quilt and I cut many, many, many five-inch squares out of Liberty, many five-inch squares, squares of all the colours that I had, which were mostly, to be honest, they were reds, pinks and purples and blues. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say that in the quilts I'm going to show you, there's no green. Uh, there's not a lot of green in Liberty. Uh, those pinks and blues and purples are the predominant colours. So I'm going to put some pictures in here for you now uh, of uh, uh, the way that I design. So first of all, I, I, I cut lots and lots of five inch squares and stuck them up on my design board. Uh, the, the tickets you can see on there are how many there are of each of those squares. So, um, you know, there might be six of something or two of another. And that would that was just to keep my totals so that I knew what I, uh, how many more I needed. I'd worked out a rough idea about how big this was going to be, big. And then I just started to pin these up. In fact, my design board is, is covered with uh, a furry fabric. It's actually the lining for curtains. Uh, it's called Bump. I don't know if it has any other names, but it's cheap and furry. And this Liberty is so lightweight and thin that it sticks to it really, really well. So in fact, if you look at the pictures here, they're not pinned at all. They're just placed, which means that I can step back and look and change any that I want to. So this was the first Liberty quilt I made. I've actually got all the quilts here in this in this montage of pictures because this next one here is um, I think either the light was different or or something but you can see can't you that I've got all the lovely 
dark reds on one side and the dark blues on the right there fading from one to the other through the middle here which where, where it turns very very pale it's yeah that's so once I'd got a design that I really really liked on the board there then I would pin them all together in strips and number the strips one two however many there were uh, so that the strips would just fall downwards like that and I would stitch all of them together in their long strip rows like this. If you're a quilter, you know what I'm doing. It's not. This is not rocket science. Uh, it's just a way of keeping everything beautifully organised. Okay then. So there was the uh, all the strips laid out uh, and numbered. And there we go. And you can see on the table, I've started to piece some together. I started at the pink end and I was working uh, towards the blue end. There's, there's some of them all numbered there, all the blues. And in designing like this, you've got to be quite bold and, th and stick a few that you wouldn't think would fit. Take a black and white photograph of it, check that the colour values are, are doing what you want them to do and then move them around a little bit. And at the same time as doing the front of this quilt, I was also designing the back of it. Because you'll see in a minute, I'm going to show you the back of it. But the back was all blue of this of this uh this was the second quilt um yeah, this was this one all the, the squares on the back of this one were 12 inch squares and they were all blue and so that it had a really interesting back as well so then when all the thing is pieced together the next thing of course you do is to sew the strips together press all the seams of the odd numbers going one way and all the seams of the even numbers going the other way so that what that means then is that they nest beautifully. I think you're catching a theme with me here. I really like nesting seams. <laughs> uh, now these were very long seams and I did pin every single junction. I wanted these to be perfect. I didn't want there to be any slippage, slippage at all. So one time I, w I had them all numbered one, two, three, four and I picked up one and two to sew them together and instead of sewing one to two I sewed two to one which then put the whole design out of kilter because you know they were the wrong way round and I had to unpick it. Now I'd been using um, really beautiful aurifil thread to uh, to sew this with and a, quite a small stitch because I want I want this to you know be long lasting. It took me uh, the best part of a day to unpick that seam and maybe half a day maybe I'm being uh, I'm exaggerating but it, it, sewing it took a couple of minutes unpicking it took a couple of hours because I was being very meticulous about taking them out really carefully I never ever made that mistake again not ever now at this workshop where I uh, had my uh, um, space then a couple of years a few years ago I had two big tables, this table here and another table about the same size pushed together. And so I could fit the whole quilt on this table. There's a good view of it there. And it's uh, so you can see this is the red side. The blue side is dripping down the edge of the table onto the uh, onto the floor. There's my double layer of silk wadding and then the backing that I'd done in all these um, 12 inch squares. And then the next thing we have to do then is quilt this. Now. I quilted it all in three strands of embroidery thread in all the colours of red and blue that I had. Uh, there you can see my little embroidery um, box there and all the colours and my pins and my wax. And uh, that was, um, yeah, that, that was my setup there. It was really great. And then, because I like to be entertained when I'm working, you know, I, I always mention, don't I, that I'm watching films or whatever. Well, it was Wimbledon while I was doing this one particular quilt. And on my iPad there, I watched the whole of Wimbledon. So the working name for this quilt was the Wimbledon quilt. So there I am watching a bit of Wimbledon. And this is the way that I used to do it when I was working in that big space. I had my two tables and what? One, two, three, four, six chairs and my iPad with Wimbledon on <laughs> and I would just move from one chair to the next 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 so that I would be going all the way along with the quilting 
with the iPad. And then when I got to the last chair, I got up and walked all the way around the outside and sat back down again, pulled the whole thing towards me and stitched again. <laughs> I would stitch every alternate row all the way along. So if there was numbered rows, it would be one and three and five. Then I turned the whole quilt round 180 degrees so that I would be I would be quilting in the other direction. It's quite important on a very big piece like this not to quilt them all the same, or you, otherwise you get a bit of um, bowing going on. So I would quilt alternate rows like that. It's especially important with machine quilting, I think. But with hand quilting, I respected that as well. So I quilted in the ditch simply. I just quilted along the sew lines of the of the squares so that the fabric would do the uh, would be the main feature and the quilting would almost disappear into the background. And I think there's a yes, you see this picture here. Now that makes the squares look like they are rectangles, but they're squares. And so for this quilt, I actually brought this quilt home, the one that ended up in the exhibition. I called it the Mark Knopfler quilt. Because if you know Mark Knopfler, he is the lead singer of Dire Straits and then has a very successful solo career. And I was a big fan. I had all his solo albums on repeat while the whole time I was sewing this particular quilt. And then when I was hand quilting it at home here, I, um, I, I just quilted 10 hour days watching old concerts on YouTube and listening to the music. So the working title for this quilt was the Mark Knopfler quilt. And then just the nice little story about that one is um, I got to the very end of all the quilting and I just had the binding to do. So I stitched the binding on and then hand stitched the binding down all in one day. And then it was a, and it was a Saturday. And I remember I, I don't know why I did this, but I looked to see if there were going to be any if Mark Knopfler was going to be doing any concerts anytime soon. And quite amazingly, he was going to be at the Newcastle Arena that night. So, of course, I finished binding the quilt. It was pouring with rain, I remember absolutely pouring with rain and I drove all the way to Newcastle Arena not really certain that there'd be a ticket I think I think I kind of knew there would be a ticket there would be a return and there was and I got in and the are Newcastle Arena those are arenas where bands play and they're awful aren't they they're like huge enormous great big aircraft hangars and so Mark Knopfler was that big right there over there in the distance and I'm a massive fan massive fan I, the music was great. I really enjoyed it. The atmosphere was really good, but I didn't really... And they didn't have the big screens up so that I could see them or anything like that. So the working title for this one was the Mark Knopfler quilt. Uh, and so there we go. And there it is finished and hanging in the exhibition there. Um, this is, uh, as I say, six years ago now. Now, the nice end to this story, this part of the story is... <laughs> Um, I have a, a, a good friend who is um, a TV producer. Uh, she, um, if you know, uh, oh no, what's the name of her thing? I can't remember. She did a little television programme with uh, Jenny Eclair. I can't remember what it was called, Judith, I'm sorry. I can't remember what it was called. But Judith Eclair and um, Jenny Eclair and Judith, um, my friend. Uh, they work in TV. Well, it turns out Judith had once done a documentary about Mark Knopfler and she came to my exhibition and I was telling her the story about how it had all been uh, his uh, um, music that I was listening to and how I'd caught his working title for it was the Mark Knopfler quilt. Well, didn't she get in touch with him and tell him and didn't he buy it? <laughs> so Mark Knopfler's sleeping underneath that one now, which makes me very, very happy indeed. <laughs> very happy now <coughs> so that was uh, the Mark Knopfler quilt went to its rightful home so now then this next picture uh, was the Wimbledon quilt which was 8 foot 6 by 10 foot which is very big the people who commissioned this one uh, he said uh, it was the guy who really wanted it uh, they saw it in the exhibition 
he said he wanted it to go down the sides of the bed so that it touched the floor. Well, that's quite a big quilt because the bed's big and then down to the floor's quite big. His bed's quite high off the ground. And this was the, this is the workshop window I'm looking out of here. And this was uh, some friends of mine and one of the guys who ran the cafe who uh, helped me to take a photograph of it. So they carried it outside like this. It was rather an event. And there is the quilt uh, from the upstairs window of my workshop. And this is when Anna says it looks like it's got a bright light shining in the middle of it. Because that hasn't, it hasn't got a light. That actually is the way that the colours all wash into one another. And then the back of it, this is the back with the big 12-inch squares. Maybe they're bigger than 12 inches. They must be. Yeah, there must be 16 inches square. And then here it is on the customer's bed. And so that was, uh, they were very pleased with that. It lives in Cumbria now. And this one lives in Yorkshire. This was another one that I made in the same way uh, for another uh, customer. And as I say, that one lives in Yorkshire now. And then what the whole time I was making this, I made this for my mum. And that started me making, that was for Mother's Day the, that year. It started me making the colour wash cushions which are much quicker to make, cheaper to buy, although they are expensive because of the huge amount of time they take to make. I, d I haven't made many of them, but um, I'm making one for me at the moment. So that then is the story of how I made the colour wash quilts, why I made them, and how I probably got enough Liberty, blue Liberty, Liberty only, to make one more small one. I'll dig out my Liberty and see, but I might make another. I really enjoy making them. Uh, that whole, um, the, the, the idea of pinning all these squares up and then living with them. I lived with them for a couple of weeks, uh, not sewn together, just pinned up so that I could actually move one or replace one with uh, an, another shade or uh, in, tweak them until I got them exactly how I wanted them. So that then, guys, is another in the Liberty series, not quite um, a, a film, but at least lots and lots of pictures all strung together with me chatting away. So thanks for watching, and um, I'll be back with... I have got some more Liberty um, projects that I'm making, uh, but uh, for now I'll leave you with uh, these pictures of the quilts that I made in 2013. Thanks for watching. Bye now.